Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to talk more about chair conformations of cyclohexane and substituted cyclohexane. And just as a reminder, if you look at this uh, model here, um, I'm trying to figure out if the person is looking to the left or to the right. If you have a, a little figurine and they sit down on this model, their back would be right here and their butt would be right here and their legs are uh, swinging down off the chair over here. Okay. We have some terminology also that we'll take care of uh, in this video and that terminology is mainly used to describe the orientation of these hydrogens because on cyclohexane you'll have 12 hydrogens um, and if we start putting substituents on that cyclohexane then obviously you'll have less but the orientation of those hydrogens are going to be very important for us to show uh, not only in the model but also on paper. Before we start, I want us again to make a cyclohexane and make sure you put all the hydrogens on your model. Okay. Not only that, um, I want us to have a couple of uh, methyl groups. Okay, so you're going to have a couple of methyl groups. Go ahead and pause the video and do that. Okay, if you have your video, uh, if you have your video, if you have your models, um, let me show you um, my cyclohexane. Okay, it's a, it's already puckered and in a chair conformation. And then my methyl groups. Actually, I was having a little bit trouble uh, with my methyl groups. If your bonds are stuck to your pieces, okay. Your kit uh, may have uh, one of these bond pullers. It's a rubber holder, basically, a gripper. Okay, and then let me put my hydrogen here. This squiggly line here means the rest of the molecule. So here's my group, right there, my methyl group, and I'm going to attach that to the ring at some point. <clears throat> In a previous video, uh, we practiced how to draw the two chair conformations, one with the person looking to the left and one to the person with the person looking to the right. The one looking to the left you offset your bonds like this and then the one the other chair you offset your bonds in the opposite direction. Some of you uh, may have learned how to draw the chair conformations a little bit differently than I, than I, than I am. Um, Admittedly, mine doesn't match exactly what the textbook does. Okay, but let me show you how I would draw the chairs. Okay, good. And then for this one, the the carbon on the right are now swing down to the legs. Ah, uh, I'm not happy with that. And here, swing to the okay are two chairs. Okay. Um, again, in the textbook they kind of tilted a little bit and I'll do that here. Okay. But the textbook looks, you know, in my opinion, great, better than mine, but uh, drawing it with these two bonds uh, horizontal it's going to help us orient uh, the hydrogens that are on your cyclohexane. Okay. So let me zoom out because we are going to use the models quite a bit. Hopefully you have the models with you. Um, and let me redraw my cyclohexane, at least the chair on the left. Okay. Ah, not, not great, but again, uh, as long as the hydrogens are clear, we should be okay. So here's my model. Okay looking down at it flat and then when I tip it like this okay I'm seeing the hydrogens. There are 12 hydrogens on your cyclohexane. Um, let me push this off to the side. So I'm looking at this carbon that's kind of shifted up. Okay, That carbon is this carbon with the dot. Okay, the, the, the one all the way to the right. Again the one I'm pointing at right here. Look at my two hydrogens. Okay. Even if you have it tilted like I do in the drawing, uh, you still have one hydrogen that's mainly up 
and one hydrogen that's slightly down. But go ahead and orient your molecule so it looks like this, okay, like the textbook, because now we have stuff that's straight up and straight down and off to the side. The first hydrogens that I would draw on the cyclohexane template is this one right here, the one that's straight up. I'm going to color code this. The most important for me hydrogens to draw first are is that one right there. Okay. That's going to that's going to actually orient all the other hydrogens. Because that is called axial. Axial means straight up or straight down. And uh, we have another describer, the direction. And on my molecule and on my drawing, it's up. So where is that again? It's this carbon that I'm pointing at right there. Hydrogen straight up, axial up, axial up. This one is actually down and it's off to the side, like to the equator. So equatorial down, equatorial down. Axial up, equatorial down. What other two? Oh, by the way, doesn't that look? What does that look like? That carbon. If I cover up the molecule portion on the left, if I cover that up, what does that look like? That looks tetrahedral. It almost looks like if I have. those two hydrogens set up like that. See this is tetrahedral carbon and there's your 109 degree bond angle. So it would be looking really really strange if you drew the axial hydrogen straight down. Okay, And that's what I'm hopefully uh, training you to recognize that when does it look ridiculous. Okay. I'll show you when it looks ridiculous. It looks ridiculous if I had done this. Each carbon will have uh, two groups on it that are very specific, either axial, equatorial, or either up or down. So if I take this template here and I draw my axial hydrogen down, do you see how that looks kind of weird? If I take the second hydrogen and I draw it equatorial up, that, that to me does not look tetrahedral. I don't know how that happened. See, my hydrogens now match, but look at my other bonds. Okay, they're not these blue bonds right here. Hopefully, with more practice, you train your eye to know that this is uh, ridiculous. Okay, this is no good. Yeah. And that way, when you're maybe in a rush in an exam and you draw a hydrogen, if you have a gut feeling that that hydrogen is out of place, you know, go ahead and consider does it look tetrahedral. So if we take a look at the carbon on the other side, across from this one, it makes more sense to have the axial down for this hydrogen. This is axial down, AD, and uh, for the hydrogen in the equatorial, we have it up. What do we also notice? That one of the hydrogens is axial, the other one's equatorial, and one of the hydrogens is down and the other is up. Okay. Here we have AU, axial up. Here we have AD, axial down. Can we prove that with the models? Okay, look at the carbon all the way on the left, right there. I'm pointing at it. Do you see how that hydrogen is axial down, straight down, and this hydrogen is equatorial up. Okay. So each of these carbons, you'll have two hydrogens, you'll need to be able to describe them. What's the easy? Well, those are the two easier, easiest carbons to draw the hydrogens for. Once you have that situated, hit all the axials, or the rest of the axials, because they're going to alternate. Axial up, axial down. When you do the axial up, you know, go through the 
the bond in the back. Okay, axial up, axial down, axial up, axial down. So I wasn't too happy with my template drawing because see these are kind of close. If I had taken my time, the two hydrogens that are axial in these two positions would be a little bit farther apart. Okay, but still, it you can still see all the axial. So there are six axial hydrogens. One. Two, three, four, five, six. There are six equatorial. And what color am I going to use? Uh, let's see if I can use black. So we have, oh, here. let me see if I can use light blue. Equatorial down. Equatorial up looks like this. Now, this carbon is a little bit tricky. It's equatorial down because they toggle. Equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up. Oh, sorry. Equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, and you're you are going to put that a little bit to the left. Why? Why couldn't I put equatorial down to the right? Well, let's take a look at the model. Oh, thank goodness, I thought I made a mistake. So here's your equatorial down, the one I'm pointing at, and it's this one right here, this hydrogen right here. Okay, so equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, slightly to the left. Look at the hydrogen I'm pointing at. It's this hydrogen right here. Okay, uh, continue, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up would be in this direction for this carbon here. Okay. Now, the textbook, when they tip the chair you know, slightly, the equatorial up and down, axial up and down, are a little bit more clear. So it's perfectly fine if you want to draw it this way. Okay. Because when I put those hydrogens, see we have up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay. I know we have bonds on paper that are crossing. That's well, obviously because it's it's impossible to show it truly in 3D on a flat piece of paper. But do you see um, if I hold it like this, mm, like this? See that these bonds in the back are gonna, are behind these bonds in the front. Don't worry about it. I'm I am not too much of a stickler for that. Okay, so just draw the line straight through uh, the lines in the back. Okay. That is one of the chair confirmations. Can we do this for the other chair confirmation? Because remember this chair, the person is looking to the left because their back is here. Let me draw the template for the other chair where the back is on the left. Oh man, see, I already messed up. See, that's the wrong chair. That would give me this chair right here. Okay. Um, so, the chairs are actually in equilibrium, and we'll get to that a little bit later. They actually interconvert. But let's practice with a chair where the person is looking to the right. Again, I'm not great with drawing this chair. I'm better at drawing the, the chair looking to the left, as you can probably tell. Ah, man. Okay. Whew. Now, to make the model, we're going from here, right, to, to this one. You know, if you think about it, look at this dot right here in the upper northeast. Okay. Where's that dot now? That dot actually is over here. Because what I did with the model is I'm going to push this one down and I'm going to push this carbon up. So if you want, I, I'm not going to draw that. But those dots are intentional. And we have equilibrium between these two. If you want to do that with your model, okay, 
it's actually really cool because your model, or at least my model, it snaps into the two chair conformation so you could feel it with your hands. So here's the chair, the original chair. I'm going to take the head and make it the feet. I'm going to take the feet of the original chair and make it the head. I don't know if you saw that, but do you see how it snapped into place? Let me try this again. Okay. This is the original drawing or and the original model. Take the head, the one on the right hand, and push it down. Take the carbon in the left hand and push it up. Okay, so it didn't quite snap as quickly as I thought it would. Okay. But there's your new chair. Is it really the same thing that we drew? See this chair right here? Yes, because the carbon that I'm holding right now is the head, the very top, the south, sorry, the uh, northwest corner. Look at the dot. The dot is down here, the one I'm pointing at. Okay. Do you remember which hydrogen was the easiest to draw? The easiest to draw in our original template was this one here, the one that's axial up. Where do you think an axial up hydrogen is on this molecule? It's this one, right here. And then this one is equatorial down. You see how this looks now tetrahedral? If I cover up the right side of the molecule, that carbon looks tetrahedral. And if you want uh, to compare with your models, okay, where is that hydrogen? It's this one, oops, let me just, to this one right there, the one I'm pointing at all the way to the left. That is the pink hydrogen that I have drawn here. Okay, one more time, right there. And then the purple hydrogen is this one, the equatorial down. Now that we're oriented, and now that we can see that this carbon is tetrahedral, okay, do the rest. Axial up, axial down, axial up, Axial down, axial, axial down. Equatorial down, equatorial up. Equatorial down, equatorial up. Equatorial down, equatorial up. Do you see the places where I kind of hesitated? It's these two carbons where I know they're equatorial. And I know the direction. I just don't know if I could, if I should draw it slightly to the left or right. Okay. But if you check your models, that hydrogen right here is equatorial up, slightly to the left. Okay. Focus on this hydrogen right there. It's on this carbon in the back. So if I take my model, okay, that purple hydrogen, the one that I asked you to. Keep an eye on this one right there, the one I'm pointing at. That hydrogen is, you know, it's a little bit hard to see, but do you see this carbon here on the left, the one that I'm pointing at here? You see how this hydrogen that I'm touching is equatorial up, but it's slightly to the left. That's this one right there, equatorial up slightly to the left. Why is this essential? to know that on this carbon the axial position is in the up or in this carbon the up position is axial okay it's important to know because most likely on an exam or a quiz they'll give you a flat molecule like this okay i'm using some halogens now and you're responsible for drawing the two chair conformations from a flat drawing. Okay. Let me show you some tricks. But what's essential before you know we do those problems is that you understand your templates. If you know your templates very well, then see this bromine here? You know which hydrogen to replace with a bromine. Out of the 12 hydrogens, where does the bromine belong? See this chlorine right here? You'll have to decide out of these hydrogens which should be a chlorine. 
And then when you interconvert to the other chair, how does those how do those two substituents reorient? Reorient. Okay. I know it's right now a little bit uh, abstract. So let me give you a problem. It's the same molecule. We're going to draw it flat with wedges and dashes. Okay, arbitrarily I'll make this wedge and I'll make this chlorine uh, dash. Okay. The problem is, example problem, draw both chair conformations. We need two drawings. This is important because remember how I said maybe in the previous or uh, an older video that six-membered rings are all over the place in biology. And for instance, glucose is a six-membered ring. But glucose is not flat. It's not a hexagon, flat hexagon. It assumes a chair conformation. And by positioning it in the correct chair conformation, you could pre predict where the other substituents on glucose are. Now, if you think about it, your receptors, your taste buds, or your um, or receptors that transport glucose, okay, they need to recognize where exactly those groups are. And as a chemist, you know, we can predict what kind of receptors or drugs can interact with molecules that have six-membered rings if we know where the substituents are. So let me give you a tip. Draw. Uh, the chair templates first. No substituents. No substituents. No hydrogen atoms. Okay. Get that down pat. Okay. So let me see if I could do this in a timely manner. Okay. Oh. And if you want, you could pause the video and try it yourself. Just the templates for now. Okay. So my first template. Okay. Give yourself a lot of room. And the second template, you got to offset the bonds in the opposite direction. Oh man. Okay. I'm getting better, I think. Okay, there. Next, number your ring. I typically like to make carbon number one one of these three top carbons. Okay, this is not for naming purposes. This is for figuring out <coughs> what location each of the substitutes go under. I like this as one. Two, three, four, five, six. Now, it may by coincidence be the right numbering for naming, but again, I'm only numbering to orient the atoms. So here's one. So here's a challenge. Two is connected to one, but which one is two? Is two this one, or is two this one? Okay. If I take my molecule, okay, and I orient it flat, or I orient it looking downward like this, I'm worried about where carbon 2 is. So this is carbon 2 in my flat drawing. And then one next to it obviously is carbon 3. So when I put this on its side for the chair conformation, okay, do we keep track of where that carbon is? Let's try again. This carbon right here. Keep an eye on where it is when I put it on its side. This one. Mm, right. Do you see where it is? It's right there. It's that one. Okay. Let me go back to flat. Keep an eye on this carbon, the one that I'm pointing at. When it's flat, see, you see that carbon's on the right. So carbon number two is this one. Okay. okay I'm not going to label the rest. Well, let me label number three. Number three is here. Um, I have to put it off to the side because I don't know if that chlorine on three yet is going to go straight up. Now, how do I know that so fast? Because I've been drawing these templates over and over again for the past two decades. Okay. 
So see this carbon here, the, the group can either go straight up or off to the side down. Okay. So I'm leaving space here just in case I have to draw something right there. You're going to say this is the next big step. Wedge, for me, I like to say wedge is up, dash equals down. What does that mean? That means that if I have a molecule that's flat like like this, okay, see this hydrogen is coming towards me, wedge. I like to orient the molecule so when I put it on its side, that wedge indicates up. Okay. Now your classmate could do the opposite and still have the same correct drawing. It will look different, but it will still match the, uh, the answer for the two chairs. We have to pick a convention that I feel like there's less uh, chance to make a mistake. Wedge is up. So when I look at my wedge dash drawing, I got to make sure that that wedge is up on my chair drawing. Here's carbon number one, so I need something that's up. Do you see why it's important now to memorize and or to be able to draw your templates? In the up position, is that axial up or equatorial up? The wedge dash doesn't tell you ax axial and equatorial. It only tells you direction. So it, when I use this, I have to know, am I drawing this up axial or am I drawing it equatorial? Well, if you practice with your templates, the up position in this carbon is axial up. That's where I'm going to put my first bromine, right here. When I draw a chair, if I have a substituent in the chair conformation, I insist my students draw the hydrogen off also. Now, we're not going to draw the hydrogens for 2, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, We're only worried about the carbons that have substituents. Look at this dash. It is dash, and I'm going to say dash is down on carbon number 3. The chlorine on carbon number three should be pointing down. Here's carbon number three. Now, again, I don't know yet. I know it has to be down due to this convention, but is it axial down or equatorial down? If it's axial down, to me that looks weird. Okay, It's equatorial down, and your hydrogen is axial up. What can you do? Bromine is blue, okay, make chlorine maybe green or cyan. Okay. Um, I'm running out of time. Okay, here. Okay. When you make it flat, okay, you see how my blue is uh, towards us and my cyan is away from us. Now, it's flat, so when I put it on its side, it doesn't look like a chair. But I'm making this carbon number one the head. The head. So I'm going to shift that carbon up, and I'm going to shift the one across it carbon, that carbon down. So there's my chair confirmation with the head that I'm holding on my right hand. Look at my bromine, straight up. Look at my chlorine down to the side, equatorial down. That's what I predicted right here. Okay. Now, I'm not going to have time. Well, I'll do this in a different video, but let me show you. That's half the problem ready. Okay. The other half of the problem is if I draw the other chair confirmation. This is called a chair flip. Let me just fill this in first. Axial up, equatorial down. You're going to have an equilibrium arrow, okay, right, like the half arrows, and this is called a flip. You're not flipping the molecule, you're, you're actually pushing the carbons to make the other chair. So, on a future video, I'm going to take this carbon number one and push it down. So now carbon number one is here. I'm going to take carbon number four and push it up. To make carbon number four right here. I'm not going to tell you here, but my challenge is which one's carbon number two? Which one's carbon number two? So unfortunately, um, I'm hitting up against time. Let me, we'll take care of this in the, the next video.
but answer that question, where is carbon number two?